Well, hey everyone, and welcome to our physics homework tutorial. Uh, we hope you find this tutorial helpful in your study of physics, and if you do, please visit our website at www.physicsvodcast.com. There you're going to find over 200 physics examples in every topic of physics. Uh, it's sure to help you get through that physics homework. We'll see you then! And this is Mr. Newitt. And here we're looking at another problem with your Sioux Falls physics teachers, this time on projectiles. So we've got a desperate punter that is kicking a football. That football is going to go 50 meters, and that's about 55 yards. Pretty good punt. Uh, downfield. It has a hang time of three seconds. And what we're looking at here is we want to see, can we figure out, based on that data, what the initial velocity of the punt was? And notice if you've watched any of our earlier broadcasts, we've kind of already walked through how you could take an initial velocity and figure out how high and how far it's going to go. This problem is simply doing the reverse. And we should probably make note, um, you can easily see how far it goes, uh, a lot of network, so it'll give you the hang time. So this is one of those little calculations that'd be pretty easy to do on your own. So what are the things we need to remember first? Well, similar to our other broadcasts on projectiles, the first thing we need to do is look at our equations. And remember that there are two basic equations. One is the equation for velocity. And that is that the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. The second equation we'll be using is the one for position. Okay, the distance of an object is equal to its initial distance plus initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. Now remember that both of these equations then, uh, when we apply them to projectiles, the important part is simply to determine which pieces of those equations we're going to need. All right, now let's remember a few things about the motion of this football. Remember, like we've been discussing, anytime we have projectile motion like this, we want to break this down into the horizontal and the vertical pieces of the motion. Remember, those are completely independent or um, separate from each other. So horizontally, the football is going to have a constant velocity. Whatever initial velocity it's given in the horizontal direction is going to stay in the horizontal direction the entire flight of the football. We are assuming no air resistance here. Vertically, uh, the football's initial velocity is going to be affected, obviously, by gravity. So as the football goes up to its highest point, at that highest point it will have zero um, vertical velocity, and then it will begin to make its descent back down to the ground. Remember in these situations that the vertical velocity that the football hits the ground with would be the same vertical velocity it is uh, launched at, or in this case, punted. All right, so let's take a look then at some numbers. And we've got a little diagram of our football's path drawn here. A uh, note that right now we don't necessarily know whether or not it's to scale or not. But we do know then that it has a resultant velocity that is going to be at an angle. And that that resultant then can be split into those two parts, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. The other piece that we may want to add to our diagram is some information about the time. Notice that the hang time is given as three seconds. And that means then that it is three seconds from the time that it is initially kicked all the way until it reaches its end point over here. And so we may want to even write this down. And again, usually I think it's a good idea to maybe put a little subscript there that reminds you that hang time is the total time of three seconds. The other place that is an important point to us, and we'll be using this here in a minute in our calculations, is that top point. And again, as we mentioned, that's because that's where in the vertical direction it comes to a stop. So we know some information up there. We know that the 
vertical velocity at the top of its path is zero. We also know that that's going to be halfway of its total flight. So the time, or in half of its total time at that point, would simply be 3 seconds divided in half, or 1.5 seconds. That's going to then allow us to begin our calculations for velocity. All right, well, let's go ahead and do the vertical velocity first. So um, as we're going to look at this, we are going to use that midpoint that we were just talking about where we know that the vertical velocity is going to equal zero. And we'll go ahead and, and kind of let that be our V sub F or our V sub final in the Y direction. So we're going to say that that is zero meters per second. That will be the top of the flight here. All right. Now, the reason we're going to be really focusing on the velocity is we actually know nothing about how high this football went. So our second equation here is really not much use to us for the vertical velocity. All right. Now, what are, we, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the initial velocity in the y direction, and that's our unknown. Okay, we don't know what that is. Do we know anything about the acceleration in the y direction? Well, we certainly do. Acceleration in the y direction is gravity, which is working downward. So we'll say that is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we know the time that is involved here. And again, we have to be careful. We're interested in this top point here. That's our ending spot for what we're looking at. So the time is not 3 seconds, but rather 1.5 seconds. All right, now we have enough information here to plug into that first equation to solve for our initial velocity. So 0 meters per second is our final velocity in the y direction is equal to v initial in the y direction, that's our unknown, plus negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration times that time of 1.5 seconds. All right, so just a simple multiplication here and a little solving, and we will get an initial velocity in the y direction that's equal to 14.7 meters per second. So now we've got that vertical component of velocity. Next, we want to take a look at the horizontal. And notice that in this case, we actually do have enough information to use our distance equation because in the horizontal direction we know the distance that it travels. Now one thing we uh, talked about again in earlier broadcasts is that we've got a big long distance equation here. We don't necessarily need to use all of those terms. So what do we know about the horizontal direction? Well, first of all, we are looking for that initial velocity in the horizontal direction. That is our unknown. We also know that without air resistance, there would be no acceleration. Now remember that little simulation we saw of the football at the beginning? It does not speed up or slow down in the horizontal direction because gravity is not acting on it in the horizontal direction. So that means then that if we look at our distance equation, this last term that includes acceleration is not needed. We have no acceleration if we're working in the horizontal direction. Uh, we also can eliminate the initial distance because we're assuming it starts at an initial distance of zero. And finally, we have its final distance or its final position, which is that 50 meters that it traveled downfield. What we are left with then in the horizontal direction is this. Distance is equal to horizontal velocity times time. And again, in this case, our 50 meters takes us all the way to the end. So the time that we want to be including here is the full three seconds. So we have 50 meters as our distance, unknown velocity, multiplied times 3 seconds, and then we can finish up the algebra, and we get an initial velocity of 16.6 repeating meters per second. So if we take a look, we now have values to plug in to our diagram that's listed above. In the y direction, 
we had an initial velocity of 14.7 and in the x direction an initial velocity of 16.6 repeating. Notice then that actually our diagram was reasonably close to scale uh, because those two components are reasonably close to the same amount um, and that tells us we do have close to a 45 degree angle. Alright, now that we know the initial y direction velocity and the initial x direction velocity, we're ready to actually come up with our answer. Remember our answer says calculate the initial velocity of the, of the punt. So what we need is the resultant amount which is going to be this velocity. So we have to use a little Pythagorean theorem here. We have a right triangle set up and we know the two legs of the triangle. So essentially v sub x squared plus v sub y squared will equal our resultant velocity squared. So if I put 16.6 repeating and square that plus 14.7, square that, that will give me my resultant velocity squared. And just doing a little bit of the math there with that, you'll get a resultant velocity amount of 22.2 meters per second. So that means then that our football left that punter's leg with a velocity of 22.2 .2 meters per second, which translates into 14.7 meters per second up and 16.6 .6 repeating meters per second to the right. However, we are actually not done yet. Notice that the question simply says, what is the initial velocity? And velocity is a vector. So if we have a vector quantity, our answer is not complete without knowing this angle. Okay, so we can know that it's going at 22.2 .2 meters per second, but what angle was that exactly? Well, the easiest way to do this is to go back to a little bit of trig. We have 14.7 and 16.6 .6 repeating as our two sides. And when you are dealing with the two sides of a right triangle, they are related by the tangent. A tangent is opposite over adjacent. The opposite side in this case is the VY. The adjacent side is the VX. So we would then have tangent of our angle is equal to 14.7 meters per second divided by 16.6 .6 meters per second. And that will give us then an angle of 41.4 degrees. So again, just under 45, which actually means that our punter was wise in the ways of physics because he ended up pretty close to the maximum range, um, which would have been at a 45 degree angle. So 22.2 .2 meters per second was the velocity of his punt at an angle of 41 degrees. Thank you.